What is up everybody, it is the Minifigure Guru here, and I'm back with my second custom set video. This one is obviously going to be the Incredible Hulk, as it is the second movie in the MCU. The Incredible Hulk came out in 2008, and it starred Edward Norton, Liv Tyler, Tim Roth, William Hurt, and actually a couple other pretty big names once again. It made 264.8 million dollars, which was a little under half of what Iron Man one made so you know it wasn't the biggest success even in terms of its time it just didn't do that well my take on the movie is that you know it's not that good i think we can all agree on that you know it just feels out of place in the mcu as a whole and then as a movie it was trying to be like a character study and i know that that's what edward norton wanted but it just didn't succeed at that. And then on top of that, there was no good action. So it's like, you know, you get, you get nothing. So, you know, it's just like the black sheep of the MCU. Everyone seems to agree with me on that, considering it has a 67% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 70% for the audience score. I'll also say now that it was very difficult to come up with sets. I'll talk about that more as the video goes on, but I'll just say that now. So let's start with set number one, which is based off of a scene in the movie that really isn't even a full scene. It's based off of Bruce Banner turning into the Hulk, the accident that turns him into the Hulk. Now I know that's not a real scene, you don't see the origin in this movie. You see glimpses of it, but not the origin itself. So, you know, that just, uh, that just shows the lengths I had to go to create a second set for this movie. I had to take from something that didn't even really happen. But let's start with the minifigure. Starting with minifigure number one, we have Bruce Banner. He's based off of Edward Norton, obviously. He has a bit of a shocked expression. He uses the combed over hair, and he has a white tank top on. He also has blue pants and some brown shoes. He has a bit of stubble as well. Originally, I actually had him have this brown belt that you see on. I did that just to add some more detail to the Hulk. And then I'm like, well, if the Hulk has it on and this is supposed to represent him changing into the Hulk, then he has to have it on. But then I realized it just looks dumb, so I took it away. And that's why we ended up with this minifigure. Minifigure number two is going to be actually a big fig. It's going to be the Hulk. So he uses the Hulk mold that has like the hair going down and it looks like his pants are molded on. It uses that mold. Um, I think that's probably my favorite Hulk mold. And... The hair definitely works the best um, for this version of the Hulk. So he has some blue pants on, whatever, that's what, you know, um, I had Bruce Banner wearing. He has an olive green skin tone with a slight smirk. Originally, this is what he looked like. I changed this uh, like two days before I'm recording this. You know, I just thought there's another Hulk spoiler in this showcase. And I just thought, why include two Hulks with ripped pants? And, you know, rather than including just one damaged Hulk and one intact Hulk. So then I ended up just sticking with a simple, you know, simpler design. Minifigure number three is going to be Tim Roth's Emil Blonsky. He uses the comb over piece as well, has some slight stubble and an angry expression. He has a simple army uniform on with some detailing to show badges and pockets. He has pants of the same color with brown boots. And also, I know he doesn't really fit too well in terms of this being the gamma ray accident, um, but I needed to include him somewhere. And, you know, I could barely, I didn't know like what four minifigures to include here. So two of them are actually pretty like, they don't make sense, but I just had to include them here. Our fourth minifigure here is gonna be Samuel Stearns. He's, you know, again, he doesn't make too much sense in terms of this being the gamma ray accident. You could also think of this as just Bruce Banner's lab, if you want to. Um, I just called it Gamma Ray Accidents and said it's the catchiest title, but yeah, now that I think about it, you can literally just refer to this as like any lab in the movie. Um, he uses the messy hairstyle with a bit of a shocked expression. He has his simple blue coat with blue pants and a gray shirt. Overall, he's not too memorable of a character, but again, I, try, I needed to include four somehow. So I ended up going with him. So the set itself would just be the lab. Um, like I said, I thought of it as the accident, but I just had the moment of realization that this doesn't even have to be the accident itself. It can just be 
him turning into the Hulk, which he does do in the movie. That is something that happens. So you, you don't even have to think of this as, you know, his lab. This could just be that part of the movie, which now it is. But it's still called Gamma Ray Accident because that is a catchy title. So it'd have some lab equipment here and there. It'd have a play feature like the Darth Vader transformation set. That's why there's a reference picture there where the helmet or where, you know, you can flip him. So one side you'd put the Hulk, one side you put Bruce Banner, and you can flip it using a little knob. And then you can recreate turning it from one side to the other. You'd also be able to destroy some lab equipment here and there. And yeah, it'd be a very simple set. Hopefully it would look pretty good from the outside while having some cool play features on the inside. So let's take a look at the concept art. If we look at this set right here, as you can see originally, it was a more of a circle, kind of like the Iron Man set. I had a device that, or the chair that he sits on with the thing that comes over and around. And then I just scrapped it. I preferred to go with the play feature and also with the play feature, it represents more the scene in the movie that we see, which I guess is more important uh, to represent a stuff from the movie rather than some glimpses and something that happens, you know, off screen. So there's that. Um, if we look at the minifigures, as you can see, I was always planning on including the Hulk and Bruce Banner, but as you can see, Emil Blonsky was very late to the game. I just wrote him on there and drew a quick little model. I don't even know why I drew the model. And Samuel Stearns was so late to the game that I didn't even draw him or write him down. I literally drew him as I was, you know, planning the structure of this very video. So he's very late. So yeah, that's set number one. Set number two would be based off of the final battle at the end um, in Manhattan, I'm pretty sure. So let's start with the minifigures. Our first one here is the obvious. We have the Abomination. I used Killer Croc as a base for him. Uh, like I could, it works pretty well, but... They could also, and I would appreciate more if they just made a new mold that was unique to him with, with the parts with like the white colored parts sticking out some more, and then you have the uh, spikes on the back, and then you have some, and then you get rid of like those ear type things above that you can see next to the spike on top of his head. Just you know there are some problems, but for the term for the sake of drawing it, he killer cracked model worked very well. So he's in a dark green with a bit of an olive tinge. This color I don't think exists, but you know, it, I had to use it because he's darker than um, the Hulk, but uses he's the same color, just a darker version. So it, that created some difficulty there. Uh, he has this kind of off-white color um, to show bones sticking out. Uh, and then he has some brown spots throughout his body. Overall, the Abomination is pretty memorable just because he is like, you know, the Abomination. Minifigure number two is going to be Betty Ross. This isn't an accurate outfit, I will say that, but it's more interesting, so I went with it. Um, she has a kind of off-white trench coat above everything with a blue shirt, black skirt, black boots, and then obviously her legs are there. She has a, you know, kind of Again, shocked expression, and she uses the, I don't know what you call that hair, but Scarlet Witch from 2015 uses it, and it appears a couple other times. Um, you know, you see it all over the place. So she uses that in a dark brown. Or minifigure number three is going to be Damaged Hulk. So as you can see, his pants are ripped, um, and he has uh, like these shadowy parts uh, where his rib cage would be, and uh, throughout his body. That's just to show, you know, he's more like more muscles poking out. His skin is kind of going in in a way. He has a lot of scrapes and scratches and some veins throughout. He also has a angry expression. I was, I, you know, my rule is to not do two of the same minifigure, but this one just, well, first off, I could, I didn't even know what else to do. Second, I thought, you know, he, Abomination needs someone to fight. And I already did at Bruce Banner and Hulk, so it's like, who else would I do other than just a different variant of the Hulk? And so that's why I went with the damaged version, just because I needed to switch it up. I didn't want to include two of the exact same minifigure. That'd be boring. So I went with this. Fourth and final minifigure is going to be General Thunderbolt Ross. He uses the dog trainer hairpiece in gray with some white highlights. He has his big mustache with some lines to show his age. Um, he is in a similar outfit to Emil Blonsky, though it is different. There are a couple more badges since he, you know, is higher up. He has some stripes on his arms 
with the white poking out. He has darker green pants and black boots. It's still crazy we haven't gotten some version General Thunderbolt Ross. I really think we should. Um, but this is just my take on him. So the set itself would be very simple. It would include two small little cars. It would be able to break in half somewhere, hopefully. So you could use them like they do in the movie. They use them as like boxing gloves and this and that. You know, it's uh, that's one very creative thing that I'll give props to the movie for. Is that they use the um, things around them in very interesting ways in that final battle. You'd also get a little side corner thing. Because they are battling on the street. So you'd get that. Um... I placed it at $40 just because of the big figs, because in the um, big wheel, or like Hulk versus Red Hulk set with the big wheels, um, that was $60, and I think though that's because they included other stuff to hike up the price, and that's that's why it was so expensive, maybe. I think that I put it at 40 just because two big figs cost a lot for Lego, supposedly, and they always hike up the price when there's big figs and since there's two i don't know i just guess it'd be 40. anyway let's look at the concept art as you can see it was always supposed to be that way um there's a car there a side street you got the hulk abomination betty ross general thunderbolt ross you can see general thunderbolt ross actually in i put that he would include a little hat there but i didn't draw it he still could that'd be cool but yeah not much changed from the concept art i pretty much drew exactly what i wanted to to make and ended up making and yeah overall that's the video guys i hope you enjoyed you know the incredible hulk isn't the most exciting or interesting movie doesn't make it not fun to draw um you know and come up with this this video tell me set pieces you think i missed characters you think i missed things i should have done differently you can tell me all that down in the comments below i'll see you guys in two days for another list and of course i'll see you guys next week um next thursday i'll see you for iron man 2 bye